Welcome everybody to interview number four. This is Kim, who is joining us to discuss her life, you know, the, the things that she's been through, her trials and tribulations with men and relationships to contribute to this uh, My Dating Night Mirror Stories series. So let me get Kim on. Kim's participating by microphone only, so you won't see her face but you will be able to hear everything that she has to say. So welcome, Kim. Welcome to the recording here. We're going to put this online in a little bit, but uh, I want to give you an opportunity to kind of let, let the listeners know who you are. Give them a little info, a little background information about who is Kim. Okay. Hi, Ms. Deb. Thank you so much for having me. Um, I am a 39-year-old divorcee. Um, I live in the Bahamas, so I'm outside of the U.S., and um, I have two children, nine and seven. Um, oh, babies. My ex-husband. Yeah, babies. And um, yeah, so I'm so excited to be a part of this. Um, I think what you're doing is awesome, and I wish I had this when I was younger. Well, you're going to help somebody now. And that's, you know, I really appreciate you, especially since you're not even in the United States, making your way uh, over, you know, to participate in this. I really, really appreciate it. So let's get started. First, you know, give me an idea. Now, the relationship that you want to discuss, is it one relationship or are you going to talk about several? No, this is one relationship. So this is with your ex-husband? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Well, let's get started. Let's see. How old were you when you met this young chap? Um, I was about 21. And you know your book about um, women pray, men pray? Uh-huh. P-R-A-Y. P-R-E-Y. Right. We met at church. And, um, and so it was, you know, the typical church scenario. You date. You um get to know people, get to know each other. And um, so we dated for about almost two years. And when we got married, I was 24, 24 years old. Yeah. So, um, you know, it was, for me, it was wanting to belong, wanting someplace to belong, wanting a group of people to belong to. And, um, because I remember feeling like I never had that. And um, I said so it was like, oh, you know, you, when you feel like you find your, your people mm-hmm. and you find your crew, and that's what it felt like for me. And um, I say, so, you know, we met at church and, you know, it was the, you know, he's the professional guy that every girl wants to date and, you know, has his stuff together and um, in this really great job. He's an engineer. And, um, and so it was like, oh, you know, everyone wanted to date him. You so know? how much older, what's the age difference between the two of you? He is six years older than, than I am. Okay. So would you classify so him years. as being uh, what we call a, quote, good black man? Yes. Quote unquote, you definitely. Okay. Definitely. All right. So they'll get, mm-hmm. let's let's go along. So how did this happen? Where did things start to go wrong? Let's put it that way. What did you first notice? Well, you know what? I'm. There were things that happened, but you know, hindsight is always twenty twenty. You know, it's perfect vision. That's why know? we're here, and girlfriend. That's why yeah. we're here. <laughs> and I think it was about two years after we were married that, um, you know, things just happened that for me just seemed out of character of somebody who would, who's this loving husband. Um, I think 20, it must've been 2007. We got married in 2005 and I had to have surgery. Um, and so I was in the hospital, came out the hospital. He had just gotten a, a job. Um, with another company. And so he moved from mainland, the mainland, um, main island, Nassau, to another small island. And, you know, I was in the hospital. When I came out, I thought my husband would be there to help take care of me. And he would, you know, at least request some time from work. And he was like, no, you know, I just started this job and I'm not going to ask him for time. 
And I was so taken aback that I could not, I just couldn't understand why this person who claimed to love me so much and would be there for me so much wasn't there. Oh, you boy. Know? He wasn't just there, not there for you. He wasn't there for the child either. Well, at the time, we didn't have any kids. So, oh, you know, okay. they came later. And so at that point, it was like, okay, something's off here. And I just couldn't put my finger on it, you know. Um, good thing I had my dad, and so he took care of me, you know. Um, and then later on, it was, you know, he was taking his exams for his professional license. And um, we had moved to the other island fully. And, um, and so things really became about him and taking this exam. And I was all in because I wanted to be supportive, you know. Um, but then when the, when the exam happened and the, the light, the, you know, you have the professional license now, you're the man type of thing. It was like, oh, you know, this other person is really nothing, you know? And, um, and I remember over the course of our marriage saying to him several times, you know, I feel like property to you. I don't feel like a partner because you don't treat me like one. You treat me like property that you can use when you want and then put back on the shelf when you don't want. Oh, boy. And Yeah. So for me, it was, you know, a lot of that and trying to reconcile what is this and why doesn't this add up? Why doesn't this feel like love? So yeah. how, when, when these things were going on, Kim, how did you feel? I know you just said it doesn't it, feel like love, but, you know, can, do you remember how you felt when these things were going know, on? Do you know what? It reminded me really of how it was when I was growing up. Um, I was raised by my grandparents primarily. I was raised in Jamaica. My parents were like, my parents just weren't ready to be parents. And so my grandparents raised my mom's first three daughters. And... Um, you know, it was my grandmother for a good amount of the time. And then my granddad moved back to Jamaica in 92. So I was about 12. And, um, and I just remember feeling I could not do anything right. Like, I didn't know from day to day what I would be, you know, either what there would be an issue about me not doing something right or what am I going to be told that I couldn't do anything right? It, like, I could not measure up. I couldn't do anything right. And, um, and then because in our house, my sister, my sister was the younger one. She's younger than I am um, by 19 months. And so for, for us growing up, it was always Kim, you have to take care of your sister. And so it didn't matter that, you know, she was the sister who grew up and, you know, did whatever she wanted, went wherever she wanted. I was a sister who had to take care of. And, um, and so, grow, like, when I was going through those things with my ex-husband, it just reminded me very much of the relationship with my sister. Mm. It mirrored a lot of that. And it was, you know, you just, you're wanting this person to see you, to see all that you do for them. <laughs> you know, and it's crazy now that I'm saying it. Um, but then they never do because you just never measure up. You're not good enough. You know. And this, so that brought back all those, reopened all those wounds. All of that. All those wounds. Um, it just brought back so much from my childhood. And I remember the day that I realized that that's what it was. I cried. I just sat down and cried because I could not, I, I just couldn't believe that this was my life playing in a loop. It was mm -hmm. happening again, but just with an, with a different person, but it was just the same thing, you know? That's how it goes. But you know what? Yep. I'm so proud of you because what you did Sometimes it takes people years in therapy to do that, and you did it by yourself. Mm -hmm. Okay, oh, so look, look at look at Kim. You did something right. You did oh, something yeah. right, and you did oh, it really well. 
Oh, yes. And I've done many things right since. And oh, you know what? That. Yeah. I mean, one of the biggest things I did right was leave. Yes, was girl. That marriage. Smoking and, um, out. <laughs> oh, yeah. I mean, I got to the point where I was clinically depressed because it went from wanting like this person not seeing you to them controlling you. So everything was it became very much controlling. And as if I can give you examples. Yes, wherever please do. We, wherever we lived, there would be cameras, not just outside, but inside. What? Oh, yes. And so it was all under the guise of, oh, you know, if someone broke in, I'd be able to see and so forth. But I always felt like I was being watched. And, um, and I remember having to plug them out and, and immediately after I would plug the, the camera out, I'd get a call. Oh, this camera is offline. And I'm like, well, I don't feel like being watched. You know? I so say it was little things like that. Then oh, it became, my God. Oh, yeah. Then it became, oh, you know, I, it, I couldn't have my own thoughts about certain things. Um, because then it, the pushback would be, oh, you can't think like that. I'm like, but I can. I'm a different. I'm a separate individual from you, so I can have my own thoughts. And it would just be, no, you can't. You can't think like that. You're not supposed to think like that. And it just went, on. oh yeah. yeah. Now, when you <laughs> when you reflect back, okay, um, these things happened. When you reflect back to when mm -hmm. you were dating, did mm -hmm. any of these? things pop up that you just were mm -hmm. so young you just didn't know what you were seeing not really you know it's the classic um you know the classic narc i'm going to love bomb this one and she's the best thing since sliced bread and i couldn't you know i can't imagine how you're not taken yet you're so great you're so this you're so that classic Mm -hmm. you know okay and so the the thing about that is the that you never really get back to that point because there's the slow um you know the, 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 the very slow decline of oh well I'm not so great anymore how do I get back to there you know so you start and clamoring so, for their approval their validation right, right. very so very much so Oh yeah. So what was the what was the, your bottom line? What made you say, "Okay, this is it. I've had it. I'm done." Well, you know, one of the things um, that keeps women hanging on, well, two of the things that keep women hanging on for you know for years and years, hope and fear. And for me, the the fear of those things um, just it was like lessened over time. I realized that for my children to have a, an emotionally healthy mom that I needed to get out. Because if I stayed, I would have been, I would have lost my sanity. Mm -hmm. You know, because over time it was, you know, the little things, the gaslighting. Are you really okay with the kids? You know, can you handle them today? And then you're wondering, what on earth are you asking me this for? I've been doing this day in, day out. So it's the list of things that make you start believing that, am I really okay? Oh, boy. Oh, yeah. Whew. So when you think about this relationship mm -hmm. and how the love bombing part what was it that was so great for you about that? I mean, did you at any point say, you know, maybe I should slow this down? Why is he doing all of this? He's kind of rushing me. I'm feeling pressured. Did you ever have any of those kinds of feelings? I re you know what? I remember having that feeling when he wanted to get married. And I was like, well, why are you rushing this? I'm not ready. You know, and... um because in all of that, 
I must, I'll, I'll be honest. It was like feeling like, oh, finally someone sees me. Finally, you know, someone mm-hmm. sees me, someone sees how great I am, you know, and telling you all of these things. When it came to the point that he wanted to, you know, he started talking to people about proposing. And I was, I remember I was so upset because I'm like, why are you rushing this? I'm not ready. How long had you because been dating? I, when, the, when you started dating for, for over a year, but I was the girl who was never going to get married, uh-huh. never going to have kids. <laughs> he said, is that right? <laughs> <laughs> And so, you know, when all the other little girls were dreaming about their wedding, I'm like, nope, never going to do it, you know? And so we're like a year, almost a year and a half in, and he started talking about it, and I was so upset. I was like, nope, not ready, you know, come back to me in about six months. Wow. Mm -hmm. But it wasn't, it wasn't the feeling of like oh you know hold up is there's something wrong with this it was just my own thing of oh well I'm not going to get married um you know and for me looking back at it I realized how much of myself that I did not know you know how much of me I didn't know how much of me I didn't I didn't heal from my own childhood you know and so I was like being with him was a way to fill all the things that I needed to fill myself. Yeah, that's the part I think a lot of people, you know, sometimes young women will write to the mm-hmm. advice column and they'll say, he gives me self-esteem. And I right. could never understand. I mean, what you said makes sense. But, of course, you can't, no one can give you self-esteem because oh, no. of self. You're supposed yeah. to be to yourself. And, uh, but that is what they mean, what you just described, that this person builds mm-hmm. them up and fills those empty spaces. All right. Yep. Oh, boy. Mm-hmm. So, Kim, just in retrospect, because, you know, we are wise people now, all after oh, the yeah. fact. <laughs> <laughs> if you met a young lady who uh-huh. was, you know, in a similar situation where she met this guy and, you know, the guy seems okay, what suggestions would you have for her to make sure that he really is? Do you have mm-hmm. any thoughts? Well, several. And, and, you know, I tell young women this all the time now because I'm like, you know, there is no rush. Take the time to know the person in different scenarios, you know, in, the, in different spaces. Um, because the way how one person may seem, you know, with you, Look at how they interact with other people. Look at how they are with their friends. Look at how they are with their family, you know, um, and just really take the time. But, but the most important thing, I think, is take the time to know who you are. Take the time to know what's important to you. Take the time to know what you can live with and what you can't live with, you know, because I think as women, we make so many compromises, you know, We'll start out with, oh, no, I'm not doing that. And, and two weeks from now, it's, oh, you know, well, I might. Mm-hmm. We make so many compromises, you know, and really and truly, we're just not very, um, we don't honor our own self first. You know, that's one of the things that I had to learn. And I learned that after the fact. And I wish that many women would take the time to learn that before, you know, because Honoring your own self first will help you to know who you are. You know, I, I mean, I remember saying to some, a young lady last year, you know, be so very good at giving yourself what you need so you don't seek for it anywhere else. You know, and if we get very good at that, knowing who you are, knowing what you need, being able to give yourself that, you won't look for it anywhere else. I think a lot of young women, um, either through their family socialization or through religious programming, feel that putting themselves first is wrong, that they are supposed to be, you know, giving, caretaking of other people, put other people's needs first, especially children and their man is more important than them on the, on the ladder of hierarchy 
the man is at the top in their life and then their children are second and then they're last. And so um, that's, that's a tough one for a lot of women. It is a tough one. It's and a that's very, very tough true. one. It is. It's a tough one, you know? And I mean, I know one of the things I'm doing with my daughter, she'll be 10 this summer. But one of the things I'm, I'm always saying to her, you know, is it's you first. If you're not okay, nobody else can be okay, you know? And just that, because, you know, there is a thing that, that really stuck with me. I remember I read a book and it was talking about selfishness being your savior. And I remember when that hit me, it was like, oh my gosh, it really is. Because then you, as, as a woman, you get so busy giving to everybody else but yourself yeah. and depleting yourself, giving to everybody else not realizing how much you're not giving to your own self, you know? And, um, you know, I, I say this, I, I remember, you know, I picked my daughter up from school one day and she was like, oh, you know, I gave all my money to my friends because they wanted snack at the, at the cafeteria. So I said to her, well, so what did you get for yourself? Oh, mommy, I didn't get anything. I said, oh, oh so where's no. your money? <laughs> you know, I said, where's your money? Oh, I gave everyone the money and I had to sit with her. I said, babe, you don't ever do that. I said, it's okay if you want to give, but never give and leave yourself out. Right. Said, Put your money aside first and then you can give. But don't you ever let me pick you up again. And you tell me you gave everything to everybody else. I said, even if you don't want it today, you may want it tomorrow, but don't leave yourself out. Oh, that you was know, good. I know she I looked at you with her eyes big, like, ooh. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yes. But, you know, it's very important for me as the, the lessons come. And I, I mean, I use everything as a life lesson for my kids as they come to address it head on. But for, especially for my daughter to help her to realize that, hey, this is not about, I tell her, this, you are the only person who could be you. And you're the only person will be able to give you what you need. Start with that first before you start giving everybody else. That's right. You know? And so it was, you know, we, we like I said, we met in the church, so we used to go to church. I don't go anymore. <laughs> you know? But well, one of the things that, um, about the church is, is a lot, like what you said, you know, is, oh, you know, to, to feel like you're a good Christian woman is the giving. Right. You know, not just giving, then, sacrificing. sacrificing, sacrificing, exactly. Because like you, you like, like oh, you're supposed to be Jesus Christ to somebody. Thank, it's like, you. No. <laughs> thank you. You know, and it's like, no, I don't have to do that. You know, I, I don't. And, um, and I'm, when we learn that, when we can learn that as women, then no, I don't have to sacrifice. I don't have to give my everything to everyone and have nothing for myself. I can give to myself first and then I can choose, you know, if I want to give you, you know, until we learn that, you know, if we will, we'll, I mean, it's sad to say that we'll fall into those same traps of wanting to give to a man, wanting to be or be this for a man, wanting, you know, it's like, no, this is about partnership not about one over the other or you controlling me or you owning me. No, this is a partnership thing. That's why I have you such know? a problem. And, you know, people start talking all this stuff about, you know, the woman submitting because that, you know, I, I don't know what it was originally meant to be. I can only talk about how it's used now. And, uh, you know, yeah. in, in 2020, 2019, whatever, it's, it's not, that's not what they mean. What they want is to have their foot on your neck and tell you what to mm -hmm. do, when to do it, how far you can jump, when you can jump, what you can wear, how you can do your hair, who your friends can be, oh, yeah. everything. Be, and that's under yeah. the umbrella of submission. And so just like, you know, what you just pointed out, I just, I, I can't do, I can't be a fan of that. Just can't. It's just done when no, it's, it's messing not at all. Up. So when you look at this, Kim, because yeah. I don't want to keep you too long, but I did, I did want to, you mm -hmm. know, get your whole story. Um, when sure. you say you were going to, you know, to talk to the young women that you mentioned a couple of things. Is there anything else 
that you would tell them to look for? Because you, you know, you kept talking, you covered some other ground. So I don't know if there was something you might want to add to that list. Because there's going to be a lot of young ladies going off to college, you know, know, in a couple of months. Oh, yeah. You know, um, I'm not sure. I'm not sure if there's anything that I missed from what I said, but just look for, look for the guys who are, you know, who can honor their word. Okay, a lot of men say things. A lot of men will say many things. And I mean, it, it, it comes down to the list of things. If a man will lie or, you know, like sort of be a bit shady about the list of things, he will be about the big, the big things. Mm-hmm. And about the big things that matter to you, you know. Um, and, and the thing is, Ms. Deb, is for young women to be your own person. Be your own person. Be grounded in who you are. So nobody can shake that, you know. Don't let anybody let you second guess what your, you know, what your values are, what your morals are. That's very, very, very important. Right. Don't let anybody, um, let you second guess that. Be very sure of who you are, you know, and take the time to do that, you know. I think I didn't really get to do that. I didn't do that, I'll tell you, until I was separated. Yeah. <laughs> and it's like, it took, we were married for 10 years. We separated like five years ago. And our divorce was final, you know, final a couple of years ago. But one of the key things I did after separation was really to look at myself. And who I was at the time, who I wanted to be you know, and all the things that I was using to stop me from being that. You oh, look know? at you. That's interesting how you, um, you know, step up and take responsibility for those decisions. A lot of women oh, yeah. don't. They're still very angry. And, you yeah. know, they're, so they're putting more of the responsibility on him. And, of course, it is his fault for acting the way he mm-hmm. did and lying and cheating. I'm not taking any of that away. But what mm-hmm. I, the part that is, our responsibility is when we see that the first time, what do we do to prevent it from happening a second? So there should not be a second, a 15th and a 77th because that's it. Now you're, you're being, you're not honoring yourself and you're making poor decisions. I got you. You know, for me, it was very important that I realized that I was looking for someone to give me what I wasn't even willing to give myself. You know, that was like the biggest hard truth for me. You know, I wasn't willing to love myself the way I wanted to be loved, to give myself all the things I wanted. I was looking for someone else to give that to me. And really and truly, that was unfair of me because until you're willing to give that to yourself, it's unfair to look for someone else to fill that for you. Exactly. You know? And so, you know, for me, it was taking the time to become very sure of who I was at the time, who I wanted to be, and the steps I needed to take to get there. Because I needed to look myself in the mirror every day and be proud of the woman that I am. Oh, look at you. That's my motto, too. And, I, you know, unfortunately, I mean, even when I do stuff that people might say is, you know, a bad thing, I still know that I chose to do it. In right. that moment, I chose to do it. So I own it. And I'm not embarrassed mm-hmm. about it, and I don't feel guilty, and I'm not ashamed. So I can always right. look myself in the mirror, and even if I say, you little stinker, you. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. You know, I mean, I have, a, I have a daughter. I have a nine-year-old, and she watches what I do. You know, yes, she watches what I do more than listen to what I say. And, um, and so every day I have to be very mindful of myself and my actions and my reactions you know and and, trust um, me your son's watching too oh yeah he's no, watching he is. yeah he's watching he is. because he's gonna need to know what it means to respect a woman and how yeah. women should respect him as well you know right and, and you know with them because they're so close in age anyways you know one of the big things for me with them is teaching him how to treat his sister Mm-hmm. You know, and at this point, she doesn't like it or, or can't appreciate it right now. 
But my thing to her is always, you know, he is going to be the one to grow up and protect you. You know, and he said, he'll say to me, you know, mommy, you know, when I get older and when I'm a parent, this is what I'm going to do. Oh, look talk at about him. It. Oh, yeah, you know, we'll talk about it. And he's, you know, very much, you know, I'll, I'll take care of this and I'll take care of that. And, you know, even as simple as we'll go to the grocery store. And when we get back in, he will not go inside without me. So he'll help take, take the, the groceries in, but he will not go inside until I'm inside. And so that's helping to teach him to be a protector. Uh-huh. You know? Good and, job, and Kim. Things, Good job. Yeah, the little things like getting the door. You know, he'll open the door. You know? And just little things like that. But teaching him, you know, in the ways that I can, how to be, you know, a man. And what, what it means to be a man. And the things that I can't teach him, I have a, I mean, I have a great support group of people, you know, men who are able to teach that to him because I know there are certain things he will not learn from his dad. Isn't that unfortunate? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, but you know, that's all right because you're not wasting time worrying about what he's not. you worrying about, okay, well, you don't have it. Let me go see over you who does. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> I you love know, it. At the end of the day, I'm like, no, I mean, I can't have this little boy grow up to be the man that you are. No. Yeah, no you know, more get dusties. One, we don't no, need I get more dusties shot. out here. <laughs> oh, no. I get one shot at this. They will not be this age forever. I get one shot. And so I have to make sure that I make, you know, I do what I can so they become the people they ought to be. Oh, this is so wonderful. Yay. Round of applause for Kim. Thank I you. just love it. I'm glad you, uh, you know, reached out to, to share your insight and your story and your experience. I think it'd be very helpful because, you know, mm-hmm. the, and you, um, you got, you went through all this at the, at an age where a lot of the young women coming to the channel, they're at that age now. So they'll yeah. be able to relate to where you were and what you're going through, went through rather, because that's what they're doing right now. So this is excellent. I'm just so happy, happy that you reached out. Thank you. Thank you. I'm happy I did too. <laughs> yeah. Well, I'm going to try to put this up either later tonight or tomorrow. I don't know. I'm kind of getting backed up now because I got to do editing year number four. I only got one up All so right. far. <laughs> yes, but, I um, did see that one. Loved yeah. it. I and loved so she, it. You, know, you could just see in her eyes. She just, mm-hmm. her whole demeanor was like, you know, we ain't playing. And I just loved yeah. it. I was just, you guys are just really great. This is just turning out better than I even imagined it to be. Oh, yeah. Yep. Life will Thank you, you Kim. So much. Oh, yes. You're welcome, Miss Deb. Thank you so and much. Give, give the babies a hug for me. I will. Okay. Thank you. I'll talk to you later. Bye bye. All right. Bye bye.